So what, you're just gonna put your iPod on shuffle? Thank you, baby. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Every single song you own is a banger. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I would like to welcome you guys to a new NBA 2K24 video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about NBA 2K24's paywall. There are a lot of people that have been reaching out to me in my last video, of course, in the comment section, asking why did I leave out VC prices, the cost of the game, and other issues that you have to spend money in NBA 2K. And of course. The reason why I left all of that out is because it needed its own video. There are a lot of things that a lot of people don't understand about NBA 2K. And of course, there are a lot of people that are just coming to 2K that may have taken a few years off or haven't ever played a 2K game ever that needs to understand what's going on. So I'm here to provide that for you. Um, a little disclaimer, I do not work for 2K at all in any capacity. Um, so everything that I say here, Take with a grain of salt because it's going to break your heart. Yes, I said it. It's going to break your heart. Um, a lot of people don't understand that as a gamer, we go through a lot. We're consumers. And at the end of the day, it's really a choice. And I'm not here to tell you what choice you should make. But I'm going to probably give you a little bit of insight on the choices that I've made over the years as a content creator for this game, as well as an avid gamer of other video games that sometimes give me to spend money and... Sometimes I say, I'm not spending a dollar. So with that being said, let's hop into the video. And we're going to talk about this paywall that a lot of people are talking about. Let's talk about numbers for a moment. Um, a lot of people will probably throw up after I say a couple of these next uh, sentences. But what I want you to understand is this is what it is. And this is where things are going. If you are someone who is new to my channel like and subscribe if you are someone who has been here for years you know where i stand when it comes to microtransactions and spending money on video games so when nba 2k24 was announced in summer league uh a lot of people were like okay 70 dollars 100 dollars 150 dollars they were they were they were trying to swallow whatever pill they wanted to swallow there were a lot of decisions that had to be made i was in multiple Twitter spaces, letting people know that what edition I was going to be getting. And I never once wavered. I told people that I was going to be getting the hundred dollar edition simply because NBA 2K has had a track record of having VC store problems when the game first comes out. So I told myself at least I would have 105,000 VC once I got the game and I could do whatever I wanted to with it. Now for others, if you brought the base game, you only got 5k VC. If you brought the edition I brought, which was the $100, I hope you spent your 105k VC wisely. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, if you were somebody that spent $150 on the copy, then you must really love the NBA because that was what the draw was. Not the season skips, but more so that you would get a year's worth of subscription for the NBA League Pass. Let's talk about the two big elephants in the room, VC and MT. They are now both available in the store and they have slightly different prices this year. You can start off with spending $2 in either or category. Um, my team community, I'm sorry what's happening to you. I appreciate y'all though. But back to you guys. VC prices are now up to $150 for 700,000 VC. Now, with that being said, I believe that 700K can get you somewhere, but $150 this is where we are. I'm sorry to say I've been saying for saying it for years, over a decade um, since, you know, um, the my team community was birth. This is where things are now going. I knew that VC was going to be 2K's uh, currency, but I would have never thought that we would get to a point where we are spending more on the in-game currency than the actual game. Now, of course. There are free games out there that have this model that say, okay, you can play our game for free, but you will be held up as far as advancing with time. And if you give us your time, you will advance, but at a much slower rate. But if you give us your money, you will have 
easier access. You will speed along things. You will have a faster track record. And that's where 2K is because instantly, if you buy NBA 2K for $100, plus you get $150 worth of VC, your first build will be a 85 overall easily. Also, if you buy a $20 Hall of Fame seasonal pass, which they do have a free version. If you spend that $20, not only will you get more VC, you will get extra content for that six week span. So if I did the math right, $100, $150, $20, all spent in the first day of NBA 2K. We are talking about what? $270 as soon as you boot up NBA 2K24. And oh, did I forget? If you don't have time, or if you are somebody who wants all of the rewards of the season pass immediately, you can buy level skips. Now, if I did the math right on that, I believe it's about $70, somewhere around there, $70, $80 to get instantly to level 40 day one of nba 2k24 so if i can do the math again oh man it's a lot i don't even want to say the number but for everybody that's in the comment section right now please tell me what that number is now when looking at it from that scope that is not the paywall that is not a paywall in any sense but what it is is something that will stop the initial grind of a lot of players out there that want to enjoy the my career experience so if you look at that as a paywall i will tell you that you aren't wrong in your assumption and how you feel about it but it's not necessarily a paywall it's not going to be something that stops you from doing something in the game whether it be online or offline you can still go into my career as a 60 overall you can still go to the park at a 60 overall, but your experience will be terrible. You will have one of the worst experiences of all time to the point where you will say NBA 2K24 is not your game. It is trash. You don't want to play it. You don't want to spend the money. You don't want to be subjected to have to spend that money to enjoy your experience. Now, of course, some people will say that you can just grind out the game. You can go to my career. You can play about 10 games. After you play those 10 games, stock, stock up on that VC and start upgrading your player. Once you do that, you can go to the street ball uh, quest route. You can go to Chris Brickley. You can do the, the weekly quest and possibly get a little bit more VC. But I've done the numbers. In order to get your build, and this is for roughly almost every build in NBA 2K24, it's going to cost you 189,000 VC immediately to get to 85 overall. Now, also, my build is a 95 overall currently. Yes, I am an elite. I've already got my rep. We can talk about repping all that later. But in order to upgrade your build, every level after 85 is going to cost you 13 to 14,000 VC each level, which means I spent 13.5, 13.7, 13.3, 13.6, 13.4, .3, every single level. So around about 14,000 VC for every single level. So if again, to all my math nerds out there, I need the math on that. From 60 to 85 overall is 189,000 VC. And there's about 14,000 every level after that until you get to 99. Please do that math for me and put it in the comment section. Also, to someone who would do all the math for everything that I'm talking about here, I will pin your comment, so please do your due diligence. Now, once you get to a 99 overall, you're done. You're, you're A-OK. -okay. But to all of my people who spent, let's say the $150 on the 700,000 VC, and you got your first initial build wrong, how many times will you burn through another 189K until you feel like you got it right? This is where we talk about rebirth. 
Now, what we thought Rebirth was initially when it first got announced was a way to respect your build. And what respect means usually is you go in, you go into the builder and you grab the initial build that you created and you meddle with it. You change whatever problems that you put into that build the first time. And then you go ahead and just go back in and say, thank God I redid my build. All is good because you initially want that first investment of whatever you did to that first build to be your end all be all. But that's not what 2K gave us. They gave us rebirth, which meant you would have to create a new build, a new story, a new timeline, a new way to get your build to 90 overall. And then you say, hey, if this is the one that you wanted, this is the one. But now in NBA 2K24, they have given us a new option. You still get the rebirth at 90 overall with all silver badges, which sound good, but we'll talk about that in a moment because this is where some people think the NBA 2K24 paywall stands. But now we have something at Veteran 3. If you are somebody that is chasing rep inside of the park, inside of the wreck, of course you have to get into Rise or Elite first. But after you do that, grinding rep to Veteran 3 now allows you to get a rebirth build to 99 overall. It is called Rebirth 2.0, which means the way that 2K came out with Rebirth and the way that we have it now is the same exact way you'll get it at 99. You will still have to pay hundreds of thousands of VC in order to get that build up to 99. You cannot respect anything. You cannot touch any build that you had previously at all. Now, of course, everybody's going to say, hey, I already knew that. What are we talking about here? Let's talk about badges. Yes, yes, yes. This is the biggest conversation that everyone is having right now about NBA 2K24 to the point where they're saying that this is the paywall. This is the moment where everybody is saying, hey, 2K finally did it. 2K finally found a way to put something behind money. Now, remember when I was telling you guys about all the choices you have, whether you're going to spend money or not in NBA 2K. Let me give you the content creator's point of view. I am a content creator, which means I make money off of a video game that I have no stake in building. I have not worked on 2K. I do not work for 2K, which means when I make content on it, I'm giving my point of view. I'm giving my POV. I'm giving my blog, my vlog, whatever, my thoughts, my opinions on the game that they built. So from a content creator standpoint, as soon as I hit record or I hit go live, I am making money from my opinions. So when it comes to me spending, let's say $400 on 2K, it's not a problem because in my mind, I say over the next year, I pray and I hope that I make $400 back from the content that I make on this game. But everybody's not a content creator and everybody does not have the means to do what I do, which means people do not have the means to get to 85 overall. People do not have the means to make it to 95 overall and have VC to put into that build. People do not have the means or time in order to grind all of the VC that I paid for. So there are a lot of consumers out there that do not make money from 2K that have to spend money on 2K. And not only that, they also have to be a beta tester because if they do inquire any issues within 2K, they have to put in a ticket. So essentially, they aren't a paid beta tester. They are paying to be a beta tester to make the greatest game or the greatest basketball game of all time. Now, I, I'm there with you. I understand your frustration. I understand the bigger problem. But back to the badges. This year, 2K changed the way that the badge progression and regression system works in their game. Last year, NBA 2K23 allowed you to make your build, have badge points, and put in certain badge points for badges that you would like, and allowed you to progress those badges even if you couldn't afford to progress the badge to its highest tier. Now, this year, Badge points do not exist, 
but 2k does have a progression system in place that says you cannot progress said badge until you reach said attribute requirement and oh my goodness it is stirring up the community now of course if i wanted hall of fame challenger I would have to have a very, very high perimeter defense. If I wanted Hall of Fame right stick ripper, I would need a very, very high steal. But in order for me to put that badge onto Hall of Fame, I would have to put attribute points into said attribute for me to get said badge to start progressing. And a lot of people have a huge problem with that simply because there are people out there that may have gold speed booster right now, but they don't have it on Hall of Fame and are not progressing the Hall of Fame tier of that badge because they don't have the attribute requirements. So I would like to say it is not a 2K paywall for 2K24. What it simply is, is it's just a new badge system, which you know that now 2K is making a sacrifice so much in our builds where is though there are builds out there that don't even have any 90 overall or more attributes at all because the sacrifice is so high me myself i only have four attributes in the 90 and up which is my strength my stamina my perimeter defense and my steel every other attribute that i have on my build does not have a 90 overall and yes I currently do have an attribute that does not allow me to get to Hall of Fame. But before I made this video, I checked the progression of said badge. And I'm speaking to Hall of Fame Challenger and Hall of Fame Right Stick Ripper because I am a lockdown build. I haven't even started to progress to the gold yet on those badges, let alone the Hall of Fame. So I think that the paywall that everybody is talking about isn't quite there yet simply because if you look at your build you know what you want and what you don't want for instance i knew i don't need gold i mean i don't need hall of fame and you know right stick ripper and, and challenger right now i need to focus more on my green machine my uh let's say my my driving up my posterizer i need to focus on uh, fast feed and stuff like that things that are gonna work for me right now opposed to later so if you're a build out there just look at your progression right now and tell me what you see and see if you think that the gold badges that are locked right now that can get to hall of fame do you think you would have put those extra four or five attribute points into getting hall of fame right now or would you have wanted to mold your build a little bit better once you put the initial stats up to 85 overall and said, okay, now that I got all of that up, it's time to work on this and it's time to work on that. And then you said, okay, I don't need that. Or were you one of those people that said, hey, I wanted to put this attribute all the way up to the top from the start. Why isn't it letting me? Because there are a lot of DMs that I'm getting over Twitter about this bad situation and the way that I feel about it is we are spending way too much money on NBA 2K, way too much money. But as a content creator, it does not hurt me as much as it would hurt somebody that has a regular day job that does not create content that goes to school, that is in college, that doesn't have the time to grind said badges and get said VC. So my final thoughts. Is that yes, NBA 2K24 is very expensive, especially to be a one year release. It is too expensive to the point where I don't understand how we are spending console money on a video game that comes out every single year without the initial things that I talked about in my wish list video. And yes, if you didn't watch it, watch it simply because we need something called the 2k vault which holds all of our vc from previous years all the way up till now i don't care even if you have to backlog all of it go back in time 
go to those those VC wallets or whatever and give us all of that 2K Vault stuff so that we can have our VC wallets looking marvelous and that we can take our VC with us to the next iteration of the game if we're going to keep NBA 2K a yearly release as well as the 2K wallet. Let's talk more about the 2K Vault. All of the items that we buy, all of the items that we spend VC on, they should not reset every single year. Every item I purchased since NBA 2K13 should be all the way to NBA 2K24. Whether it's the same item, just give it to me and you know, you don't have to refund me whatever VC, just give me all of the items. That makes the most sense. That's where I believe 2K wants to go. But me, iPod King Carter, I'm here to push you guys to that notion because it makes the most sense for consumers. Consumers won't be frustrated if your, you know, business practices or whatever the case may be has more of a mindset that says, hey, let's give everyone this and let them hold on to it for later. Because there are other video games out there that whether they come out on a yearly release or they come out on a four year release or an eight year release, whatever the case may be, or they're still in beta, you know, since they began. The one thing that they do is they say, hey, if you get this on this account, you can sign in, you can log in, you can sync and go and get it on another. And of course, this year, 2K did announce that cross gen progression was not a thing. So since cross play is the first thing that they announced, I am hoping that for next year, cross gen progression will be a thing. Whatever we spend on our accounts, whether it be Xbox or PlayStation, if we log in and we link those set accounts together, everything that we purchase will be on a master account for us to access. So I know that this video was pretty lengthy. I know that I talked about a lot, but if there is anything that I left out, please leave it in the comment section. One thing that I always try to let everybody know is that me, David, I'm a conversation starter. I am not the person to strike the revolution. I am not the person to start a boycott. I am someone who simply would love to have a conversation and would love to see if 2K would not have a conversation with us, but make changes in their game that reflect the conversations that we have. So with that being said, if you are new to my channel, subscribe. If you just watched this video and you're still here, hit the like button. It helps me pay for VC. And I will see y'all in the next one. This is your boy IKC signing out. Peace. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. Abba. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong, Abba, King Kong, King Kong, King Kong.